Okay. Hey everybody, Smugwimp here. Going through a quick tutorial on how to separate your quiz plugin questions from an older version of BuzzTouch or just an embedded quiz. And you want to pull them out without having to re-enter everything. And uh, use them on another app or another plugin, whatever. So, let's get started. First and foremost, the easiest thing you want to do is to go to your control panel to the source quiz, the quiz that you uh, want to get your questions from. And on that app, you want to get your JSON data. Now, in this version of my BuzzTouch server, because I just upgraded to 2.1.8, uh, it says JSON data, uh, but in other versions it used to say, or it may still say in your case, configuration data. Regardless, that's what you want to do. Select it and put it into a separate file, uh, similar to this. Let me close this guy. Alrighty, similar, and, and this is the one that we're going to be working with. But for a second, let's just look at this very simple one. <clears throat> here, oh, and uh, if you're on the Mac, uh, I suggest that you use Text Wrangler. If you're on the PC, I would suggest using Notepad++. Both of them have the capability of showing, 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 showing tab stops. So uh, it, it's kind of hard. You might not be able to see it, but you see them, right? Okay, so what we're going to do... Well, let me describe this first. Alrighty. So uh, this is just a BuzzTouch app, and it's basically our test app. Uh, it's got a BuzzTouch configuration and tells you a little bit about the application. Uh, your single theme, no tabs. It's a single app, single uh, screen app. And the one screen that it has starts here after this comma and continues on pretty much until the end so we know that it goes from here to here that's our entire bracket bracket one thing you gotta get used to in JSON is nothing starts with a bracket that doesn't end with a matching bracket everything matches if things don't match it doesn't work and that's most of people's JSON problems is getting brackets and type of brackets confused but you'll notice this entire object starts here ends here just after this square bracket just before this closing bracket that is our entire quiz plugin along with a quiz child item question. We're going to be working on this guy, which has uh, a few hundred questions per quiz and a number of quizzes. We're only going to do one quiz. The first thing you do, like I say, is go to your source quiz, get your configuration data, take your configuration data, paste it into JSON Lint and validate it. When it does that, number one, it tells you you have valid JSON, and number two, it puts it in a very pretty format that you can work with. Copy it, go back to your text editor of choice, and I'm hoping that you choose either Text Wrangler or Notepad++, and paste it in. And you'll notice all of our opening and closing brackets are aligned with our tab lines, right? So we go down to our screens, and the first screen we find, okay, is a menu screen, and it tells you what the menus are going to be. And you keep scrolling down. Okay, we're finished with the menu screen. Got a custom URL, a couple of custom URLs. Here's a screen quiz. And so it starts right here, just after this, just after this comma. You have this guy. And let's just press our down arrow and keep on going until you hit the closing bracket. When you do, we're where we want to be.
hang on just for a second. I want to see. Okay, line 137. Okay, so we know that the quiz starts on line 137. I suppose I should be talking now. I'm just kind of watching what's going on. <clears throat> Most of people's problems with respect to JSON is always with either an opening bracket, closing bracket, the kind of bracket, or they either added or didn't add a comma. Uh, I've also noticed that JSON is very sensitive to spacing. So even uh, because one time I created a project uh, and I arranged my JSON to look just like this, all nice and prettied up, but what ended up happening was my carriage return and line feeds, which are typically invisible, uh, were screwing things up. So here we are, we're down at the bottom, we've ended, we found the end of our questions here on line 874. So we want to place our cursor uh, just after the closing bracket, just before the object separating comma. Let's go back up to line 134 where we remember that the quiz started. And here it is, line 134, here's our quiz. So, holding down your shift key or whatever you got to do to select the entire thing, select the entire thing. Then you will copy it. And create a new blank document or a document with the clipboard objects, whichever is more convenient for you. And here we have our total plugin, our total quiz plugin object with all of our child items on it. Okay, so we go back up and we just want the child items because we're not doing anything with the quiz plugin. We're just removing the questions and answers and placing them in a different file. So you can select all of these objects below the leading below the leading bracket and uh, just down to before child items. Delete it and you're done. Take the entire file, copy it. Take it to JSON Lint. Did you just re? Okay. Take it, paste it, validate it. Okay, we've got valid JSON. And we've got a lot of valid JSON. Here we go. Our child items are gorgeous, aren't they? So we take those, we copy them. And basically, we're, we're pretty much done. This is our child item file. It leads off with the words child items. It's got an opening bracket, a description, a bracket of child items, child item objects, and then a closing brackets. We've already run it through JSON Lint. We know it's valid. We're ready to save it and use it. So let's save the file. <sighs> and this is our child items dot text and you would probably name it whatever quiz it was okay we can close that for a second let's go to our quiz control panel go to our files and media upload to documents because it is well it's a text document Select your file, upload your file, and 
when your file is there, go to your screen. Scroll down to your data URL. Don't worry about the data, just select documents. Got our child items. Save it. Yay, it's good. Got our data URL. Now that looks one way, but it's going to be another by the time things come around. So then, go to your Xcode project. Take your child items. Drag them over to your BT docs. You may or may not want to copy those files. There it is. Snarky, aren't you? There we go, thank you. And that's that. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, catch us on the forums.